Mayday. Mayday. This is Commander Rick calling Earth. Come in, you surface dwellers and prisoners of gravity. up to date on what's happening in the world of science fiction and comic books you know lately i've been tuning into a lot of the tv channels that go through here i've been hearing the politicians talking about national identity meach lake distinct societies and the baltic states talking about their their cultural heritage and and all the countries around they're going on and on about their national character east germany we want to preserve our national identity our national character you know from my viewpoint out here in space there are no borders there's there's just one big planet. And from the viewpoint of science fiction, there's no borders. It's just one big planet. But it did get me thinking, you know. I started to scratch my head, and I thought, well, maybe science fiction has a voice, a national character. Is there Canadian science fiction, Canadian comic book style? Is there a Canadian science fiction out other than via rail? If you can't get enough science fiction, you should check out the Spaced Out Library in Toronto, 40 St. George Street, right downtown. It was set up way back in 1970 by Canadian science fiction writer and science fiction fan Judith Merrill. Judy had a collection of like 5,000 books, but she didn't know what to do with them all. She didn't have room for them, so she donated them to the library. Judy has no formal connection to the library anymore, but now Lorna Tulis and her staff of wor miracle workers carry on the good work. Let's see if we can hook her up and connect with her now. Lorna? Lorna? Hello? Hello? Uh, I'm getting you. Oh, let me lock you down here. Uh, it's Commander Rick. Hello, How are you Rick. doing? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. I wanted to ask you some quick questions, first of all, about the library itself. Do you stock only Canadian authors? Oh, no. No, we stock authors of science fiction, or their books more precisely. So do you only stock science fiction? Science fiction, fantasy, magic realism, some kinds of experimental writing any kind of criticism about science fiction or fantasy. Do you think there's a cultural bias amongst the authors, Canadian, American, British, and so on? Is there, let's start with just Canadian. Do you think there is a Canadian bias, Canadian style? Well, there's several different questions lumped together there. But I there's always so. a cultural bias because science fiction is essentially going to reflect not only the values of the writer, but the problems that are current in his society or her society. And this comes out in, in the science fiction, which takes the problem, puts it in a different environment, and plays around to see if you can find a solution to it. Would you, what is the Canadian uh, bias then, or is there one particular Canadian bias? Well, f themes that crop up a lot in Canadian science fiction tend to be alienation, isolation, concern about the environment. Those and, are the most common ones. And in a, let's compare it to American science fiction. What would you say? Is there a distinct difference? Less violence or...? Uh, American science fiction also has, has a heavy problem-solving orientation, but it tends to be a lot more whiz-bang, um, less of, of, of the concern about isolation, le le less feeling of, of being alienated in, in, in society or from society. Who are the top Canadian writers right now? William Gibson, uh, Robert Charles Wilson. Robert Charles Wilson writes wonderful science fiction. Uh, wh um, and what's the, give, uh, give us a couple of names so people can go into the store and ask or go into the library and ask. Memory Wire. Um, gypsies, the divide. What kind of science fiction is he writing? Beautiful, intelligent, sensitive science fiction about people who tend to feel alienated, isolated, and have problems that have to be resolved. Whoa. If that isn't Canadian, I don't know what is. Very. Um, Judy Merrill edited the Tesseract's collection of short stories. Those were all by Canadian writers. Uh, how did the first book, just Tesseract's, how did that sell? It sold very well. They did uh, an oversized trade paperback and sold out completely, which is very unusual for an anthology. So they went back to, to print with a mass market edition that's still selling well. Uh, anthologies usually sell for a while and then stop cold, but this one hasn't. And what about Tesseract Squared, the second it's one? still busy selling out the first 
tra deluxe trade paperback edition. Tesseract's Cubed is coming out soon, is it not? That's right. And who's doing that? It's being edited by Candace Jane Dorsey in Edmonton and Jerry Truscott in Victoria. Now, it it's funny you mentioned Edmonton and Victoria because it sounds, from what I keep hearing, there's a lot happening out in the West, especially in Edmonton. And on Spec Magazine is coming from Edmonton, isn't it? That's right. It's uh, semi-professional, which means it has less than 10,000 copies per, per issue. But, but it's, it's good being, stuff. It's good stuff. It's being edited out of Edmonton by Marianne Nielsen and, and uh, the Copper Pig Writing Society. And there are a lot of writers in Western Canada, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary right now. William Gibson is in, in Vancouver. So is Spider Robinson. So is Robert Charles Wilson. Is the Spaced Out Library the only science fiction library in Canada? I don't think that's a safe thing to say. I think we're the largest public library collection in Canada and for that matter in North America. Really? In the world? No. Who's Let's bigger? In North America. Who's, is there, where's there a bigger library, uh, uh, oh. science fiction library? Well, University of Sydney is certainly bigger than we are. That's Sydney, Australia. Right. Um, Texas A&M has a larger collection and so does the Riverside collection at uh, the University of California, but both of those are university, all three of those are university collections. Now, are you guys all in, in contact with each other? Um, we write from time to time. I write to, t to um, Riverside more often than any of the, anybody else. And uh, what sort of things are you writing about? Uh, rare editions that have turned up, or is it just keeping abreast of what's happening? In we the keep public? abreast. We write and say, somebody stole my book. If it comes your way, send me his head. Ah, I uh, see. Uh, worldwide, are, do you have connections with some of the other libraries in other, in other countries, in Europe? Uh, There's an organization called World SF, which is for professionals dealing with science fiction, and they have an annual conference. That's where I went to meet people from Japan, for, from uh, the USSR, Hungary, Poland. You meet these people at conferences. It's like any other line of work. If I had a question about science fiction, something obscure, and I always do, uh, can I call you and get an answer, or do I have to write you a letter? You can call by telephone, you can write a letter, or you Let's can punch up in. the phone number. Okay. Uh, are you on, is there a da database somewhere, a computerized database of information that I can access? I'm afraid not, not yet. Is anyone working on it? Not that I'm aware of, but come back to me in five years. There is a lot of work being done right now. You're running just a little head ahead of us, Commander Rick. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a first. Okay. Uh, what is the important, to you, what's the importance of the library um, in terms of the global network of people who are, are into the genre, uh, the fans, the believers? What does the library do besides just keeping the books somewhere intact? I mean, there's more to it than that. Well, it is. Keeping the books somewhere intact is important, though, because I think it's important that the books that people care about, the books that they actually enjoy reading, should survive. Right. You shouldn't keep just all of the dull ones that people read because they had to. You should keep what they care about. We function essentially as, as a memory. We are your memory.